Good evening. The program tonight comes to you from the South German city of Augsburg, on the other side of the world. And I'm glad to say that we've got here three direct descendants, uh, uh, survivors of uh, the battle, and the son of one of the serving officers uh, who fought uh, in the German cruiser Emden. And now I'm glad to be able to introduce to you uh, these uh, German uh, sailors to you, and uh, on the left I have here uh, Petty Officer Hans Harms, uh, he's uh, 72, and uh, next to him here on my right I have, um, I have able seaman Arthur Werner, uh, he also is uh, 72, and on my left here I have uh, the retired uh, captain of the uh, German Navy, uh, Erich uh, Pikenscher. Uh, he is 73 years old, and next to him on the extreme left, uh, we have uh, the Prince uh, Meinrath of uh, Hohenzollern. Uh, he's the son of uh, Prince uh, Franz Joseph of Hohenzollern, who served in the Emden, but who, uh, I'm sorry to say, uh, died only a few weeks ago. Of course, you appreciate that uh, the three of these uh, distinguished sailors are old men. And it's not easy for them, uh, after so many years, uh, to speak, uh, particularly in front of television cameras uh, in a foreign language. Captain Fikensha, you were a lieutenant at the time of the battle. Yes, I have been lieutenant on board the Empton. I see. And, and um, the, um, uh, at the time of this operation, perhaps you could tell us what was the principal purpose of the uh, entry uh, by your ship uh, into the Indian Ocean and your presence near the Cocos Islands? After capture of ships, we have the order to destroy the wireless station and cables of the Cocos Islands. They were the communication between Colombo and Australia. Now, uh, and Hans, uh, you're an engine room uh, petty officer on the starboard engine, I believe, and you were been at sea since you were 18. Yes, sir. Uh, and your father and great grandfather before you, I think. Yes, sir. Uh, right, you are. And uh, tell me, uh, when this um, landing party uh, went on shore, what were you doing, and what did you see? Oh, I well remember that uh, was on that wonderful morning I was standing on deck of the Emden with some of my comrades, and we were watching uh, the mass of the cable station dropping to the ground. You know, there were some people on well, our it was people being blown up. Yes. Yeah. Well, then suddenly we heard a voice from the crow's nest, you know, crow's nest, and there is a big smoke or cloud at the horizon. Mm -hmm. Look out. And a few seconds later, well, that must be a man of war, because the uh, masts are slanting. And the masting uh, and the slant yeah. on the mast. Yes, you know, a merchant ship has straight mast, yes. but uh, the warship has slanting mast, standing like this here. Yes. And a uh, few seconds later, there was a call clear for action. Our evil seaman Werner, I think you were the man who uh, conveyed the gunnery orders down the speaking tube uh, uh, to the guns. That was your job. Yes, sir. And uh, you, in fact, are the principal eyewitness of what went on. From beginning to the end. I see. And, uh, and uh, you, had, you were on deck. You saw practically everything. Yes, sir. Now then, I wonder if you can tell us, before the battle began, what did you see? It was very easy to tell. Very easy. It was 8 o'clock in the morning, 8 or 8 or 8 30 in the morning, you saw the smoke. Now, Captain was in the meaning of our coal ship because he had to bang it at 9 o'clock. But this smoke got bigger and bigger, and our captain became suspicious. He climbed up with the, uh, with the adjutant in he, the mast. He climbed the mast himself? He, yes, he climbed up himself. Yeah, he was a good climber. <laughs> and climbed up. And at once it was made a signal to the landing party to make haste with their walk. Five or ten seconds later, the single men from the cruise net bellowed down. Enemy warship with four fellows in sight. Now, Prince uh, Meinrath, 
uh, your father, I believe, uh, was uh, uh, second uh, in command of torpedoes. Well, that's true. And for to go right into detail, I want to show you on the picture of the Emden, where my father was at the moment of the battle, was down here in the torpedo room. Since we show the whole picture already, you see the artillery of the Emden firing. You see uh, the artillery of the Emden, of course, was uh, 4.1 inch guns and the Sydney had 5.9 inch guns so it was quite clear that the reach of the uh, artillery of uh, HMS Sydney was much farther and this of course gave uh, a very quick uh, decision afterwards. Yes, a decisive superiority. Yes, right. And your father, had he had any, did he have any particularly vivid memory of what it was like below deck in this action? As far as my father told me, of course he only heard yes. the things which were going on on deck the uh, artillery and all the rest. But the most uh, vivid impression which my father had was the breaking of water in the torpedo room. So he and his crew had to save themsel themselves because not only the water was breaking in, but also uh, the gas, you know, from yes. artillery, yes. from smoke, the shells. Gun, uh, the shells. So they had to make out their way, not through the average manhole, but they had to dump out practically through the hole in which the artillery had made. Yes, yes, I That's see. It. Yes, and of course destruction was very rapid. The, the destruction on the Emden was rather immediate. Yes, I believe the ship was camouflaged with four funnels at this time, was it not? Uh, no, no? Uh, there, were, there was a fourth uh, funnel mm -hmm. which could be put ah. uh, behind the third one okay. for to give the impression that it was a British uh, ship. Ah, yes, but it wasn't in use at this particular no, time. No, at this particular time. And, in that, and I believe that, uh, that uh, uh, the, the, the steering was hit, the funnels were... were the funnels the were three the funnels uh, were blown practically over deck yes. by the shells, yes. and this, of course, reduced yes. the speed very quickly. You know, the engine made uh, 19 knots and uh, the Sydney 26 knots. So this uh, it's, uh, made, made possible that uh, the Sydney could always keep out from the uh, artillery fire of the engine. Yes, and I believe there's a further technical problem, is there not, that, uh, that when the steering was hit, the steering had to be done by, by alternating the speeds of the engines. This is right. And this yes. in turn, of course, further reduced its speed and, uh, and uh, reduced any hope, which, however thin it was, of yes. using torpedoes at any time. Well, you see, the torpedoes couldn't, used, uh, couldn't be of any use no. since we couldn't get close enough to the engine. No, I see. Uh, to the, excuse me, to the Sydney. Yes, I see that. Yes. And the Sydney always could escape. With such uh, immense destruction and uh, with so many casualties on this wrecked uh, ship, uh, Captain Carl von uh, Mueller, Commander Carl von Mueller, I should call him really, That's had right. only one course of action to take. Which is true, as a matter of fact, after the artillery had fallen out, so the ship was practically wrecked, and there was only one thing to do, run the ship at full speed on the coral reef. And that Captain von Mueller finally did. Yes. So to save the lives of those who were still left in the hulk of the ship. Especially those below deck. That's right. And uh, w what time of the day did this happen? About... Uh, this must have been, as my father told me, at a quarter past uh, 11 in the, in the morning. In the morning. Yes. Yes, I see. And uh, from then onwards, uh, uh, there was a further exchange of firing. There was some more firing from the Sydney, wasn't there? There w uh, this in, is in, true. in the afternoon. This right? is true. Uh, as you see, the flag of the Anton was still yes, on I, the mast. I wanted but to ask you about this flag. In fact, it was still flying, and perhaps it was a misunderstanding. That's true, because the, the flag couldn't uh, get down from the mast since everything was destroyed. The decks were burning, yes. so how could you reach it? And there was one man who brought it finally down, and this man yes. is sitting next to you. Yes, indeed, he's sitting next to me tonight. Now, Abel Seaman Werner, you were the man who got the flag down, yes, weren't sir. you? Yes, and uh, as long as the flag was flying, uh, there was the danger that uh, further shelling from the Sydney would, uh, would kill mo more of your comrades. Yes, sir. And uh, when you got it down, you, there was no chance of pulling it down mechanically. Everything had been destroyed in the fire. Yes, That's sir. That's right. Now, what did you do? I climbed up the You mast. climbed right up the mast. Yes. You got hold of the flag. Yes, hold down the flag. You hold it down. Yes. And then you came right down the mast. And went to the captain. You went to the captain, and yes. after that, the, uh, the flag was burned, I believe. Yes, sir. Now, Petty Officer Harms, tell us how you finally got on board the Sydney. 
You see, I went overboard in the morning, and uh, by the time it got evening, and nobody of the Sydney knew that I was a, a, a sure a thirsty man. And then I rode out to the Sydney. I saw only the, some lights there. I still remember the moon was shining, and finally I reached uh, the Sydney. And when I stepped on the ladder, uh, somebody came down with a big lamp and was searching me you know, for arms. And I, yeah. I couldn't help laughing and said, well, you see, I have nothing on. I quite need it. Uh, shall I have my arms? And then said somebody, come on, come on, boy. Then I stepped aboard, and then there was a very stout Australian sailor and said, Oh boy, he had a mug of tea here. Well, I assure you, that was the best cup of tea I ever had in my life. And I sincerely hope that that Australian soldier who handed me that big mug is still enjoying his own cup of tea, as I did at that time. Good. And just to close, I think I ought to tell you that when they got on board the Sydney, after this heroic action, the German officers were given the privilege of carrying sidearms. This privilege was given by the Australian commander, as you know, not only for the gallantry with which they fought this action, uh, but also uh, because of the chivalrous conduct uh, with which they had carried out the previous raids, uh, sending their prisoners back to port in uh, captured ships. And what you don't know, and may interest you, is that uh, by order of the Kaiser himself, each and every surviving man uh, is allowed to this day uh, to have the uh, name Emden added to his own. Uh, I thought perhaps you'd uh, like to know this uh, uh, as we conclude, uh, because in the short time at our disposal, uh, it's not been possible uh, with these uh, rather old and... Uh, and uh, genial sailors to bring you much more of this uh, drama in the last uh, action uh, fought by the German cruiser Emden. <laughs>